Nicotinamide, also known as niacinamide, is a form of vitamin B3 that's been used topically for decades in the cosmetic field to prevent skin aging, as I've already covered. So researchers decided to put it to the test orally for skin cancer prevention. In a petri dish, skin samples taken from breast reduction and tummy tuck surgeries exposed to UV with or without niacinamide found that it enhanced DNA repair. Would this translate out into less cancer? In a Phase II trial, dozens of individuals with four or more precancerous actinic keratoses each were randomized to take a placebo or 500 mg of niacinamide once or twice a day. Within two months, there was a 35% reduction in actinic keratoses in the twice-a-day group, and a 15% reduction in the once-a-day group compared to placebo. It's not that they developed fewer in those months, but more spontaneously disappeared in the niacinamide groups. What about actual cancers? By month four, there were five times fewer cancers. Eleven placebo participants developed 20 new skin cancers, versus only two niacinamide participants developing a total of four new cancers. Normally it would be difficult to fund studies on non-patentable products that only cost a few cents a day, but the results of this and a similar study on organ transplant patients were so extraordinary, OnTrack was born. Oral nicotinamide to reduce actinic cancer was a publicly funded Phase three trial, randomizing hundreds of people with a personal history of skin cancer actinic means UV-induced, to 500 mg of nicotinamide twice daily, or placebo, for a full year. By the end, there were 25% fewer cancers with no significant side effects for just pennies a day. You have to keep it up, though. At a six-month follow-up after the study was over, the cancer rates equalized back to baseline rates. What are the downsides? A study of 500 people put on up to 3 grams of niacinamide a day for five years trying to prevent type 1 diabetes unearthed no adverse effects over placebo, though it failed to prevent type 1 diabetes. The high tolerance of niacinamide is partly due to its water-soluble nature, such that you just pee out any excess, but those with end-stage kidney failure on dialysis don't have functioning kidneys, and so blood levels should be monitored as in that context, niacinamide can cause a serious, though reversible, drop in platelets, which are important for blood clotting. High enough doses may become toxic to the liver, though, even with normal kidneys. Uh, vasodilatory side effects like facial flushing, attributed to niacinamide in some older studies, were likely due to a less purified form contaminated with residual niacin. I know it's confusing. Niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, is a precursor of, but very different from niacinamide, which is synonymous with nicotinamide. One concern regarding any treatment for a largely lifestyle disease is that individuals may neglect other defensive measures overconfident in the supplement's protection. Regarding drug interactions, a concern has been raised about taking niacinamide together with carbamazepine, a popular anti-seizure drug sold as Tegretol. But in general, as the on-track researchers concluded, oral nicotinamide is safe and effective in reducing the rates of new non-melanoma skin cancers and precancerous growths in high-risk patients. To their credit, a 2021 survey of skin cancer surgeons found that three-quarters recommended its use. Other than nicotinamide, how else might we protect against skin cancer from the inside out? That's what I'll cover next.